Hello, you may be listening because you or a loved one has been diagnosed with cholangiocarcinoma. Our aim is to equip you with introductory knowledge to inform your or your loved one's care going forward. To start off, what exactly is cholangiocarcinoma? It is a type of cancer of the biliary system, which is a network of specialized cells within the liver that produces and transports bile, an essential substance for the digestion of fat. It is the second most common type of cancer arising from the liver. The symptoms that people can experience are variable, but include yellowing of the skin, also called jaundice, generalized itching, fatigue, abdominal pain, pale stools, dark urine, and weight loss. It is often asymptomatic in early stages, so unfortunately the cancer may only be found at a later stage, making it generally aggressive by the time of diagnosis. Certain conditions can increase a person's risk of developing cholangiocarcinoma, including but not limited to primary sclerosis and cholangitis, a chronic inflammatory disease affecting the bile ducts, infection with parasites such as liver flukes or viruses like hepatitis B or C, congenital disease, cysts, and stones, but in many cases there is no apparent cause. Diagnosis involves a combination of blood tests and imaging studies. Routine blood tests like liver function panels may reveal an elevated bilirubin and alkaline phosphatase level. Tumor markers that are utilized in general for gastrointestinal cancers may be abnormal, though are not specific to cholangiocarcinoma. Ultrasound is a common initial test that can show either a mass or abnormal bile ducts. CT scans can show more detail of the mass and or ducts. A special type of MRI called an MRCP is usually the imaging of choice. If there is uncertainty about the diagnosis, your doctors may may recommend an endoscopic test to get a tissue sample. It will also be necessary to exclude a source of cancer from other places as tumors in the liver are commonly metastasized from elsewhere such as the intestines. You will likely need to obtain other scans and or upper and lower endoscopy to rule this out. For treatment, surgery may be recommended to remove the affected areas. Factors that go into determining candidacy include tumor characteristics and individual factors like age and other medical problems. This can be curative. In some rare cases, transplant of the entire liver may be an option. Patients will often undergo chemotherapy if surgery is not an option and if the cancer is spread. Chemotherapy targets and kills fast-growing cells in the body, such as cancer cells. It can prolong survival, but is generally not curative. Local regional therapy is another category that includes various minimally invasive tumor-directed procedures. Specialists use techniques to block the blood supply feeding a tumor, as well as deliver chemotherapy or radiation directly to the tumor. Radiofrequency ablation uses targeted heat to kill cancer cells. Because these tumors can block the bile ducts and cause issues re- With drainage and backflow, the placement of a stent can be useful to relieve symptoms related to blockage. Lastly, targeted therapies refers to medications that cause death of cancer cells while not affecting healthy cells, such as immunotherapy. A few of these have recently been approved for the treatment of cholangiocarcinoma. Be sure to talk to your healthcare team about any specific considerations for your or your loved one's care, and also ask about ongoing clinical trials to potentially access forthcoming treatments.